another day in paradise. I am just chilling in this lovely hammock where I spent most of yesterday after the canyoning, just sleeping. Um, I think today, well I know today I'm going to have a nice chilled morning. I felt so good. And I'm having all of yesterday afternoon off. I was completely zonked out after, yeah, after a full day of scuba diving and then the canyoning yesterday. Like, you, ha you have so much fun doing these things. You don't realize how tired you are until you get back to your digs and just go. <sighs> So I'm hopefully going to go into town, have a quick walk around, and then get this bus up to Corunda. Yeah, it's meant to be this cool little. Well, someone said it was a well, it used to be a hippie commune. So I'm going to go check that out. They've got some markets there. They got a place where you can pet koalas and kangaroos. Like I would dig if I could actually have a picture with a koala because when I saw the koalas at Cleveland it's like they take it day by day it's hit and miss if you can hold them or not and that day we couldn't unfortunately so yeah maybe maybe today's the day I seriously have to get ready for my New Zealand trip it's coming up very very soon so I've got a whole bunch of things to uh, to check out that my cousin just sent across but I've been thinking more and more about the whole bungee jump. Like, I'm definitely going to do it. But just jumping off that cliff yesterday, I've just tried to imagine what it's going to be like. I had a look on the website, and I think they said it's like an eight second fall. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. <laughs> Imagine falling for that long. Oh, that's what I've been trying to do. Yeah, I figure if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it at the, at the highest, the tallest, and the longest bungee jump in the world. I mean, the birthplace of bungee jump. You'll be stupid not to. So yeah, I'm going to check that out. I need to book that. But more importantly, oh, um, one of the singers from Adelaide, well, from Saul, from the opera, she lives in Sydney, she's got a flat in Sydney, she said, we spoke and she said I could stay with her, but she's yet to get back to me. I fly tomorrow at nine, I get in at Sydney at like quarter past one in the afternoon, so I'm a little bit like, where am I going to stay in Sydney? It's easy, I can just jump on a, my hostel bookers app and like book a hostel, but yeah, if I can manage to... Uh, get somewhere free quids in so that's my main mission today try and get her number I've only got her on Facebook uh, but yeah she hasn't got back so I'm up against it here a little bit but it's fine it'll be fine you just gotta have the faith as George Mike said rest in peace knee checkup it is like of course, it's going to be swollen. Not the best, best place to try and. I don't know if you can see. Like, yeah, it's swollen. It's a bit sore, but. Like, don't worry, I'm going to live. But it's just this little knock on the side that's more sore than this bad boy here. Got a bit of a while, about half hour till my bus leaves for Corunda. So I was going to walk down the uh, the old promenade here. I mean, the tide is out. Do I jump? Do I jump down? Can I get back? No, I can't. I'm not going to do it. But it is a it is a scorcher. Sun's out. The clouds have gone. I'm thinking I should wear a t-shirt. 
I'm hoping when we get to the markets, it's going to be <clears throat> all in shade. Like it's in the rainforest, it's in, so it'll be in shade. Hopefully. If not, it looks like I'm buying a t-shirt. Found Mr. Crab! He was literally just walking and now he's stopped. Go on, move. Oh. Get it. Uh, there's another one. There. Yeah. There. Come on, move. They're alive, trust me. But now I've seen one crab, I can see tons of them. All of this. It's covered in crabs. They're quite small. But ever so often, all I see is movement. And I'm looking, and there's tons. Basically, all those little... Like... Crabs. Crabs. I just thought they were little stones before. <laughs> Virtually every single one of these little... Black spots. <laughs> it's a crab! <gasps> it's a crab field! Look at the size of that thing! It's huge! It came here in 1889. It was built in Britain in 1887. It weighs three tons. It's massive! It can fire a shell up to five miles. Five miles! Or eight kilometers. That's a long way out there. And another one. This bad boy is a howitzer. They used to be old World War One artillery. And what they used to do, they used to bore out the uh, the end of it so it could fire bigger shells. There's a bigger need for them, so they started to build them to that specification. They can only fire like. 1200 meters <laughs> still pretty far it's the wildlife here is just so varied I'm so gutted I didn't have my GoPro with me yesterday like it would have been it would have been absolutely safe but I think it's just one of their one of the things that they say you know just a safety aspect but good but anyway this guy showed us I shit you not the spider bigger than my hand it's about the size of, of the, the guide's hand huge like the spider was out over the river as we were walking up so we were we were nowhere near it and thank god because that's a big ass nope but that's the biggest spider I've ever seen in my entire life. It was huge. He wanted to show us the, the uh, golden orb spiders, but he didn't see any. There was this one section of the walk up the uh, Crystal Cascades that is like notorious for these little um, these spiders. But yeah, didn't see any, which is a bit annoying. But I did try green ant they're literally well they're not green but they're I guess like the sack like the butt is green one of the guides Izzy said if you lick its bum it's like the equivalent of four oranges it's like a crazy vitamin C shot so as we were going down she saw a few picked one up I think she must have popped the sack on my tongue and it was so it felt like a really tangy sweet basically that's yeah that's all it was she didn't say why they have so much vitamin C in them I'm gonna google that and find out but yeah bizarre absolutely so random but yeah it's kind of cool so had my vitamin C yesterday. No house said, even back in Adelaide, trying to find some vest tops. It says like Australia. Nailed it. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Great Barry Reef. Australia. Got one that's not done yet. 
Snowboard. Snowboard. What? No. Surf. Hope you're going to try and do it in. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to have to do it in Sydney. I'm going to have to do it in Sydney. I love those tacky souvenir shops, but I have literally been looking everywhere for, for yeah, for vest tops. It's like I have seen none apart from here. That's insane. I've got like one week left in Australia, and then I find them. Right. Where's Mr. Bus Bus? I was at the wrong bus stop. I don't know why I thought I was getting it from there. I was at the main bus stop area and I looked on my phone and I was like a five minute walk away. <laughs> I had two minutes to get here, so I pegged it. I literally pulled up and it came round the corner. Oh, I've just seen another shop that sells vests. <laughs> like London buses. None for ages and then they're all over the place. That was close. I thought I had royally screwed it up. Because the next bus isn't until two hours time, till half one. So yeah, I would have been stuck here, oh, but made it, and it's air -conned. thank the lord. I am a sweaty betty, that's, it's on my strap, that's not, that's definitely not sunburn, it's on my strap. It's just stunning. I've literally never seen so much green in my life. The fields, the trees, the grass, even the mountains are just covered. Look. <sighs> that was Henry Ross Lookout. Did. I am gonna try get it on the way back down. I'm gonna sit on the left side of the bus like I am now and hopefully catch it. <laughs> the view was pretty breathtaking. Made it. I was expecting it to be a little bit cooler up here. And because yesterday on the canyoning, when we got to the top of the falls, it was quite, there was a few degrees colder. <laughs> it's still so hot. But I am looking forward to exploring this place today. Archie, look what I found again. Kangaroo paws? Can they kangaroo paws? Some crocs. Screw you, said the kangaroo. And son. I'm working. I haven't even entered the proper markets yet. And they're just some, like tourist shops. <laughs> that was so cool. All those hands, I think they were hand, uh, hands, feet, paws, feet. But they did have some, yeah, some crocodile leather bracelets with a little uh, tooth on. Yeah, I say tooth. I'm from Birmingham. I think I'm going to get one, but I'm going to have a walk around, see what else there is. But that's cool. I mean, hello Australia. 
What? Oh, I don't think I should be here. Sensing a theme. This comes with an R rating. <laughs> How mesmerizing is that? There's a lot of things happening in the spare. I want to see small. Yeah. Hello. Kangaroos. Saying that, <laughs> I have bought a kangaroo hat. Totally went in. Check out that bad boy. Come on, focus, 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 focus. There we go. Crocodile skin and crocodile teeth. Yeah, I was going to go back to that original place I saw the all the crocodile stuff. It did look like a little bit of a tourist trap. In this whole area is a tourist trap. But I saw this other stall in this market I was just in, and the things looked, they just looked better. I felt more comfortable buying it off him. And it turns out he's British, from West London, by Heathrow Airport. And he's been out here a long time, he said. Didn't tell me how long, but a long time. Yeah, and then we just had a little chat about the um, how Britain is, and the whole Brexit palaver. <laughs> that was random, but yeah. Oh my god, I'm so happy with it. Oh, crocodile bracelet. Sweet. If any of you are wondering, the crocodile, they're from a farm where they're bred. So, don't worry. It was all sourced responsibly.